Okay. And, and I'm asking you a trivia question. Bring it. Patrick Mahomes threw for 278 yards in the second quarter yesterday. That's the second most yards in a single quarter in NFL history. Who holds the record for the most? Gosh. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. And I feel like I heard someone say this on TV last night. Um... I don't. I have. How about, how about, oh, no, I, hold on, hold on. Right, just, I almost came to my. It came came to my head. No, it's all right. I'll just go. I'm just gonna throw a random name. I'm gonna go with Brett Favre. No. What is I was, it? It's Drew Brees. Ah. When in doubt, when the question is about a quarterback throwing for a lot of yards, Drew Brees is the Brees safe is the guy answer. you go to. Yeah, Any time. What did he have in a quarter? What did he had? Uh, 294 yards in a quarter in 2008. 294. He, I mean, 278, and then I, I saw it was like the most touchdown passes in a quarter in a long, long time too. As far as you know, uh, he threw four in the second quarter, uh, but I can't remember who the hell that was either. It was too late. Watched too many damn games. All right, I got the first pick okay. and the biggest statement of the day by far Bill Belichick I mean I, you know I don't want to pick one member of the New England Patriots and say this person this person this person no just Be- this the is Patriots. all Belichick it's yeah. all Be- right. but it's Belichick yes look he's determined this year they're not going to go three and five on the road yeah they, they they want to be wire to wire great so that they can beat the Chiefs I think that close call against Kansas City in the AFC Championship game scared them. Yeah. And you go back and you draw the lines. Look at what we did last year to put us in this position where we had to go to Arrowhead Stadium for that game. Three and five at home. That's why they had to go to Arrowhead Stadium. They're not going back there because the next time they go back, they ain't getting out with the Lamar Hunt trophy. So this is domination. This is a different kind of Patriots vibe in September than we're used to seeing. And now, look, the quality of the opponent, especially yesterday, Still, it it's doesn't an NFL matter. team. They've not been relegated to the CFL yet, right. although they very well may be. <laughs> 43 nothing yesterday, 33-3 to on the night they raised the banner, and the Patriots keep going. They get the Jets next week. They get the Bills the week after that. They get an opportunity to deliver an early final nail in the AFC East coffin, but their prize is number one seed without question, and who knows? Maybe it will be 2007 all over again. When is it too early to talk about a team going undefeated? Well, when you're 76 to three to start the season, it's not too early. No, I mean it's the New England Patriots. We're allowed to talk about crazy stuff with them because it's not that crazy when you talk about the New England Patriots. I mean they're going to play the Jets next week and win. They're going to have a tough time in Buffalo. I'll say that's like a that'll be a tough that'll be a tough one. I'm not going to give them the win there all the way. But then it's the Redskins, the Giants, and the Jets again. I mean, they're they're easily going to be like six and one, maybe seven and zero oh into that Week Eight matchup against the Cleveland Browns. So you got to be careful in Buffalo. Man, you don't want to sprain that, your ankle yeah. stepping on any of the things they may throw on. <laughs> I know you. We if love you know that. We do. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I mean. You got to know the NFL to know that one. Right, but that's you, a good one. All right, go ahead. Okay, so but either before way, before we go any farther, that was an amazing statement. You pick. My pick will be the Cowboys' offense. Uh, I, I mean, the second week in a wo- in a row uh, to where. You know, last week, okay, was it week one? Is it the Giants? You know, you had all offseason to game plan. But here we go, week two. And again, I know the Redskins are not like a special defense and don't have a special secondary or anything like that. But the Cowboys going up to Washington, playing there, have usually been a little stagnant offensively uh, over the last few years when you look at those matchups. And, you know, the Redskins were desperate after being 0-1. They're home opener. They're trying to get off the schneid and, and win a football game. But the Cowboys offense had answered for everything. A little bit of a slow start. But then Dak Prescott started dealing. The run game showed a lot of life yesterday. Zeke Elliott ran for what? What was it? 111 yards uh, on 23 carries. So the Dallas Cowboys, I just can't give enough credit to Jason Garrett, Kellen Moore, and of course, the man driving the ship and Dak Prescott and the way he looks, the decisions, everything. It's, it's been phenomenal. Yeah. I, I, I really thought that that they would step into a bear trap against Washington yeah. because Washington looked good early on against Philly. I thought with Adrian Peterson back on the field, there'd be a level of anger there, but ultimately they just don't have the horses. Right. The Cowboys do. They have a great team on both sides of the yes, ball. Yes, they do. We're trying to figure out their weaknesses. I don't know what weakness they have at this no, point. No, I don't either. All right. Uh, I am going to go with your San Francisco 49ers. Damn. And, well, what? They won 41-17 to I know. I just, uh, you're stealing all my damn picks. I'm not stealing. It's obvious it's hanging out there. 
You're, you you could have taken Kyle Shanahan and your 49ers. Yeah, you're right. I could right. have. Um, but uh, look, 41 to 17, and the offense is working. The running game is working. The passing game is working. Like you said yesterday, that he he cracked the code. Yeah, on cracked the, Bengals. the code. And 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 Jimmy Garoppolo is only going to get better. That's what Kyle told me after the game yep. that he still has a way to go to be as good as he's capable of being because he's still less than a year removed from that torn ACL that he suffered week three a season ago at Arrowhead Stadium. And now, I remember we were talking before the season. Well, that's kind of a weird start to the year for the 49ers. They play in Tampa. They play in Cincinnati. And then they have a home opener against the Steelers. Now the Steelers are 0-2. They're 2-0. and And I asked Kyle about the week in Youngstown. And yeah. he said when he was coaching – on the East Coast. He never believed that that there was an issue with travel, and it's always better to be home, be with your family, be in your routine. Once he ended up coaching a West Coast team, he realized, my God, it really is difficult to fly to the East Coast, play a game, yeah. come back, get readjusted, and then fly again. And uh, he said Wednesday or Thursday, his guys were really kind of dead. That was when it really hit them. Yep. But by Sunday, they were bouncing off the walls, and they were good to go. And they come back again with a couple of games between the Saints and the Bears, I believe, later in the year. And I think they're going to stay in Youngstown again. Yeah, for that makes sense. It, it works. It's a great job by Kyle Shanahan. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing more you can say about that. And, and you know, to your point, too, I mean, the, their offense was phenomenal yesterday. You know, and when Kyle Shanahan cracks the code, it's one of the prettiest things you can see as far as offensive football is concerned. I mean, you know, like I joked about even on Sunday Night Football last night and you earlier in the show, some of those passes, guys are so wide open. I mean, anybody, Joe Schmo walking on the street could have completely a bunch of those for touchdowns and that's not to take anything away from Jimmy Garoppolo but just a great job by Shanahan and it is scary to your point that yeah I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is even playing his best yet so when you can win two football games and then have an alpha offensive output of almost 600 yards and what they run for 259 yards on the ground what was their average per attempt uh, um, ooh, I don't know let's it see it was like over six yards a carry yeah, I believe ooh, it was it was uh 8.4 play 8.4 per offensive play in wow. general which is insane but, uh, yeah, phenomenal job there. That certainly was a statement, so I'm with you there. Now, i got to find my statement. You stole my pick there, and I'm just not sure which one I want to well, go with. Usually in a three-round draft with two people, it's advisable to have six ready. I have six. We've I been just doing this know, for a little while I just don't now. know which one I want to go with, okay? Um, I, I think if I'm going to – you know what? I'm going to go a little off the radar here a little. The Chiefs' defense, okay? They kind of get slept on a little bit, but – the Chiefs' defense is an improved unit. And la yesterday against the Oakland Raiders, okay, got off to a kind of a shaky start. And you went, oh, gosh, here we go. The Chiefs' defense, they stink. You know, Mahomes is going to have to throw lasers all over the field. They're going to have to score 40-something points to win a football game. But settled in nicely. And the Chiefs' defense, for the first time in a long time, has a secondary you can rely on a little bit. You know, with, the, with Fuller and Brashad Breland being there and the Honey Badger. You know, they're just not a pushover anymore with Steve Spagnuolo's defense. I think they've made the right adjustments to the roster. But, you know, to give up 10 early points in the first quarter and then pitch a shutout from that, that point on, uh, got to give them a lot of credit. I mean, they do look like an improved uh, unit altogether. We knew the offense was going to be great, but the offense wasn't just dominant yesterday, as we saw. They had a quarter of dominance, and then the rest of it was the defense holding on to a lead. And I got to give them a lot of credit there because it, we're, nobody's giving an attention. I wanted to. That was good. That was good. But yeah. you, you you ignored one of your other friends. I can't believe you're going to leave Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills I, on I, the I, He was the one I was That's tossing the statement. between. 28 to 14 win mm -hmm. at MetLife Stadium. Yep. They complete the sweep of MetLife Stadium to start the season, and they had a stretch of 38 to 7 between the two games. They were down 16 nothing to the Jets between what they did to come back and win that game and how they got off to a 21 7 start. Yeah. 38 to 7. And, and just, just dominance, and we'll see what they do against better opposition because, you know, those early season opponents, you never know how bad they are or how good they are. And for the Jets and Bills, chances are they're going to be closer, or the Jets and Giants, rather, closer to the bottom end of the NFL than the top end. But we'll see. And the Giants, it's just the Giants just – let me just say this. Yeah, say it. Why not just put in Daniel Jones now? Yeah. Why, why – Eli, until they're out of contention, why not give the kid a chance to play in some games that count? Right. right? I, I, I don't know either. 
Now, maybe the reaction from the fans yesterday and the, the way the offense looked in general, maybe that'll give the Maras and the Giants organization a little confidence to, 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 to pull the cord there if need be. Remember how mad John Mara got when it was suggested that he's holding on to Eli Manning out of sentimentality? Yes, right. Yeah, methinks thou doth protest too much, John Mara. That's why Eli Manning's still the quarterback. He delivered those two Super Bowl championships. They got... They got scared by the reaction a couple of years ago when they tried to bench him, and I think it's sentimentality that has Eli Manning in that job. Any other quarterback, any other team, any other time yeah. would be benched by now, would be gone by now, not yeah. just benched, but would be gone. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I do. I agree. And uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't pretty yesterday, and I don't want to sit here and just bag on Eli. It's not all his fault. They don't have great weapons around him, and once you stop Yeah, they turned it on Beckham Jr. Yeah, I know. And then, you know, Sterling Shepard was hurt yesterday. They had another other a bunch of injuries at the receiver position but certainly doesn't look good, and I understand that. All right, I, I mean, I want to go with the Rams, but the fact that Drew Brees got hurt, you know, I, the Rams, i just giving them a consolation prize. I'm going to give the Seattle Seahawks a little love. That's good. Yeah. I like it. You know, I'll accept that. I mean, not a, not, not a real pretty week one win. Got caught off guard by a team that I think they just thought, oh, Cincinnati will beat them. But then to travel to the East Coast time zone, play that dreaded 1 o'clock game, just like you were talking about with the San Francisco 49ers. And, yeah, we don't even talk about them at times. And Russell Wilson just is an absolute baller. And it's, and it's, it's a baller with, you know, uh, it's different. And maybe compared to other quarterbacks who had big days yesterday, because he does a lot of it. It's just Russell Wilson making phenomenal throws. It's not like, oh, wow, what great play design on the offensive side of the ball. And there's a 20 yard completion over the middle without a guy in, in the picture on the TV screen. No, there's always somebody in the screen when Russell Wilson's throwing the ball. And usually it's tight coverage and he just makes it happen. But the Seahawks, Pete Carroll, how can I not give them credit? Here they are, 2 and 0 again. They're always competing. They're in, they never lay eggs. They're in every football game. It doesn't matter if you're the big bad Steelers at home, whatever it may be. They made a statement, and they're uh, they're going to be here all year long. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And three teams in the NFC West are two and zero. Crazy. Forty Niners, Seahawks, and yeah. Rams. Some good games coming up in that division when those two teams, when those three teams start playing each other twice per year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.